right so today we're going to start the session number two for the session number two this is related to this transmission system so if we uh, go back to what we actually discussed so far uh, so uh, this one second yeah until now we actually discussed about the drivetrain the transmission uh, why transmission is necessary operation of the transmission and manual transmission or manual gearbox we discussed up to the manual gearbox in during your practicals also uh, you have discussed your gear, manual gearboxes so i'm not actually going to go through the manual gearboxes about the gear manual gearboxes so long because it's not necessary and um, considering the uh, reply i actually got from you uh, in the previous sessions and the feedback um, uh feedbacks uh, i will answer your questions after finishing the lecture so uh considering the feedback i actually got from you last time i got an idea that uh, sometimes you may not actually got the whole idea of the whole uh, the concept of using the transmission so i actually decided to start from there and give you a small introduction again to this particular part and move uh move from there or then move to the automatic transmission and even though i actually plan to finish like most of these sections today i decided to actually reduce the content in order for you guys to be a bit uh, more easy and understandable uh yes so the today the parts wise today i will be discussing the automatic transmission uh, transaxle five wheel in addition to that i will again come uh, will, we will be again uh, visiting the topic why transmission is necessary right so uh, in addition to these all of these things uh, for the assignment that we need to do for this particular module we'll be actually con uh, doing a small uh, sort of like a um how do i say it? yeah so a sort of like a tutorial plus small calculation thing so that includes uh, how to find the maximum speeds of a vehicle that sort of thing uh yeah uh, right right uh let's go ahead and start so um, today our topic is actually uh, automatic transmission but before uh, we go into the automatic transmissions i would actually like to discuss about the uh transmission uh itself why the transmission is necessary because uh that probably may not be clear enough in the last time um so One second. Huh? So if you, uh, so I think you guys can remember this part last uh, last session. I was discussing this, but uh, still there was some uh, uh, some confusion how this part is actually generated, right? How these parts are actually generated. So uh, I decided to actually start from there and move towards the transmission and then go back to the automatic transmission. So uh, what I device is, uh, so I'm actually going to use the board today. Uh, so just give me one second until I set up all the things. Right, so we'll start from the graph. So if you can remember, the output, the tractive effort, the, in order to move a vehicle, I told you guys that again, camera, the laptop is here, so that's why I'm looking at over there, right? So uh, the tractive force and the speed wise. So speed versus tractive effort. Tractive effort means the force actually put by the wheel in order for while it is rotate, right? So this is the tractive effort, right? This tractive effort is actually comes as the RPM. This RPM, sorry, this diameter, right? Simple as so. 
f into simple r v. Right? That's how the tractive effect is actually comes to play, play in here. So this uh, tractive effort is actually delivered by the engine as torque. Right? So, uh, so um, the tractive effort necessary for a vehicle in order for it to start and move, as I told you in the last time, we have to push a person pushing. Right? Uh, during the start, because of this friction, right, because of the friction, right, how the friction actually works, that we have to put higher force at the beginning, right, but uh, after like a bit of a time, we can actually reduce the time, right, so that's why three arrows and two arrows, right, so the same thing was applied for a vehicle, so, so same thing is actually applied for vehicle. So, uh, as I showed you earlier, the graph actually comes like this, right? Graph actually comes somewhat like this, right? This is not the exact graph uh, that we need to use, but the graph comes somewhere like that. But if we move or if we look at the output from an engine, right? So, was RPM versus torque, right? So in this case, I'm not discussing about the power, right? At this instant, the power is not important because we just need to push the vehicle up to the movement. Then the power will be actually useful when we are discussing some other aspects of a vehicle. But for now, this is it, right? So uh, the torque output of a vehicle is somewhat like that. So then we need to find a way to convert this torque curve into there, right? This is our uh, requirement. So there's a small one, uh, right? It's okay. You can see. Uh, so uh, that is where the gearbox actually comes into mind. So once this actually passes through the transmission, or let's say gearbox, we actually get this out. So in order to achieve that, gearbox is actually using a very simple system that actually, uh, which actually comprise of gears, uh, comprise of gears, right? So um, you remember in the manual gearbox, uh, when we discussed about manual gearbox, we said that there are uh, gear wheels that actually change and the, those, that ratio actually calls for this uh, torque multiplication. And when I ask you why the gearbox is actually necessary or why the transmission is necessary, the answer you guys actually gave me was uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the answer you guys actually gave me was that um, uh, to actually change the speed. But I again uh, counter argued you, vehicle speed can be changed just by changing the RPM of the engine as well because the engine actually have the uh, capability of changing RPMs. So the gearbox, this torque multiplication or torque changing of the torque or moving this graph into here is what actually the gearbox actually uh, is doing. But as a result of that, right, as a result of that, we also get the speed change. Right? We can actually get the change of speed. Right. So uh, let's assume that uh, this particular uh, engine is actually sent through a gearbox in order to achieve this or to match this graph through a three gear system, right? So gearbox with three speeds, we call usually call them as speed. So the first one is three into one, second one is uh, two into one, and third speed is one into one. So what this means is engine speed output shaft speed, right? That's what this actually means. So when engine is turning three times, the output shaft is actually rotating only one time in the uh, three to one gear ratio. So if we come to the, that, uh, uh, what we call this uh, small relationship, 
that we discussed. The relationship says N1 over N2 is equal to P2 over P1. Also, why is it stopped? Sorry. Yeah, so the gearbox actually have three ratios. I don't know what that will happen. So there are three ratios in the gearbox. So then uh, these three ratios, the real, uh, how these actually three ratios, how these uh, three ratios going to, uh, uh, how these three ratios are going to affect the, uh, how these three ratios actually going to change this graph from that, uh, from this to here, these actually depend on this relationship. So this relationship has another part. That's actually um, E2 over D1, right? So this is the diameter of the gear wheels, right? This is the diameter of the gear wheels. Diameter of the gear wheels or number of feet, right? Both are same. So higher the diameter, the num higher the number of feet it can actually uh, keep. So, um, right. So what we're going to do is, we will take an imaginary point in this one point, right? We will take one point. So at this point, we assume torque is 100, right? And the RPM at this point has 3000 RPMs, right? So if we fit this, uh, these particular values, right? These particular values through this relationship for the first right, for the first year, then we will end up actually having a torque multiplication, right, torque multiplication. So for this three to one ratio, right, so torque wise, you can use this one, right, to find out the torque values. So T into V1 to V1 into. So, by adding these, uh, we should be able to actually get three hundred. Uh, sorry, Newton meters, and the same way we put n one into n two, d two into d one, then we will be getting one third of the speed, right? So 3000 RPMs. So we should be getting 1000 RPMs, right? So now remember these two values, right? So I'm, I actually have to uh, erase this part, right? So I'm going to erase this part. So, so we're going to draw another graph now. Right, so only for this point. If we apply for this, apply the same theory for all these single point, right? Since this uh, particular point A moved this way, right? It's actually reducing the RPM of a thousand, right? And the torque value is increased up to uh, three times of this, okay? Three times of that. So if I add that into a graph comes somewhat like this, right? So this is for the first gear, right? So this is the first gear, Good. one minute, right? Then I fit the second gear ratio. If I do the second gear ratio, similarly, I will get another graph. That's the torque values are a bit lower than this, right? And the RPMs are a bit higher than this, right? And for the third one, we can do the same thing. So this is second. And we have the third as well. So now we have this particular graph is moved RPM wise and torque wise and moved into three locations. It's moved into three locations, right? So that's three locations. So if we take
right? So these three locations, in order to get, we can't actually get this particular shape exactly, but there's a possibility of matching it up to a certain extent. So up to a certain extent, this part of the graph, right? These parts of the graphs actually being completing some sections of this particular tractive effort output queen, right? So the other thing you have to actually understand, if we increase the number of gears, right? Seven and eight, right? Number of gears, we can actually close these gaps. We can actually close these gaps. We can close these gaps, have more curves, and we can actually exactly generate this curve, right? That curve. So this is what actually happened in the gearbox, right? This is what actually happens in the gearbox. So hopefully it worked, right? But this is not all. So the transmission or the gearbox is the main reason for actually changing this or giving this multiplication, but there's another section, right? So uh, assuming this, you understood this part, right? Sorry. So if we consider about the engine and the whole drive train, so you have the engine, transmission, differential, and your wheels, right? So uh, first, this ratio is actually generated from this part over here, right? It's actually responsible for that, okay? But then with the differential, you know, there's another set of gear wheels. So those gear wheels are actually also responsible for another gear reduction. Reduction, right? So that ratio also actually going to be uh, help this torque multiplication. That also going to be help in torque multiplication. So even though this is the tractive effort we actually need for the road, the the tractive effort actually generated by the uh, so the tractive effort output from the transmission itself is somewhat like this, right? Somewhat like this. Exactly like that. It's actually somewhat like this, right? So this is the transmission now. Then that transmission output fed through these gears. fit through these gears in the differential, right? Then you get the final curve, right? That final, uh, that final gear ratio actually move the curve a little bit down and increase the torque like this. So this is the final output you will be actually getting, right? So differential and transmission, both actually assistance. So this is actually known as a, um, the differential. This differential is also called as the final drive. The reason for calling it as the final drive is because it's also giving a gear ratio. It's also providing a gear ratio. So as I told you earlier, so number of gears we can actually increase. So that's one of the reasons nowadays, most of the vehicles actually have seven, eight gears, right? Seven years gears, especially in the automatic gearboxes. For, uh, for a manual transmission, it's very difficult to actually change the gears like seven, up to around seven and six. Uh, it's exhausting. But for automatic gearbox, since it's automatically the change, gear changes are occur, it's not a big issue. So most of the modern uh, vehicles have around seven, eight, Yes, so by having seven eight gears, we can actually match this particular curve, right? We can match this particular curve. Another one thing I would like to actually uh, discuss is, so in addition to all of these things, there's something called a power curve, right? So because power curve. So in the power curve, by having this transmission, you should be actually able to obtain a very uh, 
good fuel consumption value. So how you can obtain that fuel consumption value is you just talk with something like this, right? So we forget about talk curve now, right? So RPM, let's say the maximum. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is RPM, and this is your power, right? So there's a range. There's a range like 2000 to 3000 RPM. Vehicles are very efficient, right? Vehicles are very efficient. By having these large number of gears, it's actually allowed the engine to maintain this value. Is 2000 3000 value in a constant level by doing so, engine can actually get more uh, fuel efficiency or it can be more fuel efficiency. The fuel uh, consumption will be low, right? Fuel consumption will be lower. That's another reason for actually having these sort of gears. In addition to that, I told you in the uh, in last discussion, I told you there's something called CVT transmission. So, in the CVT transmission, they can actually uh, since CVT transmission is capable of obtaining more than um, any number of gears because there's no gear uh, gear wheels to per se. It's actually using a chain drive. It is possible for it to actually match almost all of these points like that. Okay. That's how actually this uh, transmission part actually works. So, did you guys get that? You understood? Okay, so we'll move into the next session. So now you know how the transmission actually works, right? How the transmission actually works and what is the, uh, how transmission, or why transmission is necessary. So I guess uh, you understood what I explained. Since you, uh, you guys are not replying me, I have no idea. Anyways, we'll move to the automatic transmission part, right? So automatic transmission is, um, uh, you know, automatic transmission is very popular, right? Very popular. So if we go back to uh, decades or a few years, to be honest, around, okay, yeah, to around two decades, the automatic transmissions were not that popular, especially in Sri Lanka. But other countries, like especially countries like United States, where uh, long stretches of roads and high traffic is available, those people uh, prefer automatics because they are easier to drive in. Uh, tricky conditions, right? Tricky conditions. But uh, still, uh, it was. Uh, but uh, still, the prematurity of the system or the system was not uh, well developed back then. So as a result of that. Uh, most of the other um, uh, other areas or other countries actually like especially the countries like Sri Lanka did not uh, uh, did not actually uh, yeah, did not actually interest uh, did not actually prefer the automatics because they uh, were complex and the performance were a bit poor back then. But nowadays, uh, the system has been developed and they are very complex and, uh, and uh, to be honest, outperforming the uh, manual gear changing of a normal passenger vehicle, right? So to be honest, even the bracing applications actually use certain type of automatic transmission, uh, especially in, since now, automatic transmissions do have the similar uh, characteristics to a Ma manual transmission especially since it can be uh, manually change the gears and all okay so today we will be discussing about the automatic transmission as i told you earlier the main reason for these automatic transmission had a 
bad reputation earlier because they were very slow right because they were very slow but uh, at the moment or oh, nowadays these are getting very popular okay so uh, automatic transmission includes there are two main types of automatic transmissions one uh, uh, one type of transmission is we usually call them as epicyclic gear arrangements which actually has the epicyclic gear arrangements which i will uh, show you later on and the other type of transmission is the cvt or constant velocity transmission the same type of transmission you will be uh, finding in a uh, motorbike motorbikes means something like a, a what do you call these scooters scooters actually have a cvt transmission so cvt transmissions uh, were popular for some time and then they uh, fell out of favor because of trouble because they mainly use a steel belt to actually transmit the power especially if you are actually launching or if you are trying uh, accelerating suddenly in sort of like a heavy traffic conditions with the traffic lights or something these uh, transmissions do not actually last long so because of that uh, they started to have a very bad reputations the companies like uh, nissan uh, nissan and mazda nissan and mazda heavily um, uh, invested on these technologies and they developed uh, very advanced cvt systems such as the hyper cvt used in these uh, primeras uh, most cars actually back in the day most cars uh, which had um, uh, which actually had a similar um, characteristics for similar performance like a manual transmission and can be changed manually with around i think eight or nine years they came up with eight around eight years around 20 22 years ago that was a long time ago back then vehicles did not actually or the passenger vehicles at least did not um, have that much of gears anyway so yeah so we, we uh, um, in this section when we discuss about the automatic transmission the main concern here is uh, the transmissions that actually coupled using a um, what you call this um, torque converter or torque converter or fluid coupling right so uh, the image here is actually showing you a complete automatic transmission. So this is a complete automatic transmission. Once you come to the university, I'll show you a complete automatic transmission. Uh, this uh, automatic transmission is a complicated uh, components that uh, uses the hydraulic power. It's actually deliver or working work using a hydraulic power. There's no mechanical coupling between the engine and the gearbox itself. So. If you go to the manual gearbox, you can actually remember there's a mechanical or there's a friction clutch in between the gear and the gearbox and the uh, uh, engine. But in this particular type of vehicles, uh, transmission, it actually do not have something like that. It's mainly a fluid coupling, uh, which I will come back to it later. So basically, uh, uh, the housing wise, the outside works, there's no difference between a normal uh, or manual transmission gearbox and uh, automatic transmission, or except for this uh, bottom section, we usually call this as the uh, um, what do you call this? Uh, sump drive, uh, gearbox sump, uh, similar to the sump of the automatic uh, sump of a vehicle this uh, also contains oil to uh, to be more clear the complete gearbox so everything inside of the gearbox so everything that includes here and all of these sections are actually covered in oil uh, if you can remember earlier in the manual transmission side i explained you the leak around liquid or the lubrication is up to around this level but in this case in this case uh, Lubrication is or the oil is everything, so this is completely submerged or completely filled with oil. Right, so oil plays a huge role in this uh, automatic transmission. In addition to the cooling, it's actually uh, what drives the whole system, right? Whole system. So uh, obviously, it will not be using the same mineral oils that used in the manual transmissions. 
these uh, transmissions are very sensitive to the type of oil it's using especially because this complete system depends on the hydraulic pressure delivered by a pump she, uh, situated over here right which i'll come back to later um so uh, because of that the particular type of oil has to be used at all times and unfortunately there's no particularly uh, uh like sort of like a universal way of numbering the lubricants or these hydraulic fluids used in automatic gearboxes so there's like a few uh, few gradings are there none of these are uh, adapted by manufacturers so there's no regulation saying uh, or regulations related to this so uh, each manufacturer is using different uh, grading for this. So, for example, Mitsubishi is using these SP types and um, uh, companies like Toyota is using uh, Dextron uh, numbers and Daxtomatic numbers. So, it's a bit complicated to uh, dive into that. So, I'm not going to go to that level. Uh, also, I would like to actually, uh, before we go ahead with this section more, I would like to actually point out that I'm not planning to go very deep into this. I'll be just explaining how these all these sections and how these systems are working. Hopefully, you'll be able to understand there's, uh, uh, as you can see over here as well, uh, there are uh, some links I have added to almost all the uh classes make sure that uh, you guys uh, after this class finished or something you guys go ahead and watch these videos it, it will be very helpful uh yeah so uh, let me give you a rundown how this system actually works okay uh so basically if we start from the uh transmission itself right transmission itself So, um, similar to the normal transmission, the housing is completely directly bolted to the engine itself. So, then the flywheel uh, per se, there's no flywheel per se, but there's something called a flex plate. Uh, so, the, that uh, flywheel is actually, or the engine output is directly comes to this part over here, which is actually called as the uh, torque convert, right? which is actually called as the torque converter. So then the torque converter, uh, inside the torque converter, we have something called a turbine. The turbine actually uh, houses, it's directly connected to the uh, output or input shaft of the transmission itself. So uh, if you can remember, there was two uh, shafts going uh, parallel to each other in the manual gearbox that uh, we have the output shaft and we have the lay shaft, right? Uh, so in this particular type, we don't have that sort of arrangement. Everything is on a one single, uh, one single axis, not in a single shaft, but one single axis, right? So uh, the how it actually manages this is it's actually using a different type of gear train. So earlier we used normal. Uh, gear trains, but in this particular application, we use something called a epicyclic gear train, which can actually provide more than one gear ratio from one single uh, gear set. Okay, so uh, the torque converter is in charge for coupling and this uh, decoupling the engine from the transmit. Right, it's the main purpose of that. In addition to that, since this is a hydraulic coupling or fluid coupling, which I'll explain later on, uh, it also provided torque multiplication, right? Torque multiplication. So uh, that torque converter, that's why it's actually called as a torque converter. So this torque converter drives the whole system beyond here. So the first component in the gearbox itself, somewhat over here, right? There's a, uh, a pump assembly, right? There's a pump assembly as shown here. There's a pump assembly. The pump assembly actually pressurize the whole uh, the fluid, right? Pressurize the fluids and it send this pressurized fluid into a, a control valve assembly. Also uh, call it as the valve body, 
right? Control valve assembly or valve body. So this particular part is a very complicated uh, sort of a complicated uh, may sort of arrangement where the uh, where are, where there are few valves which controls the gears which gear to be selected. So these gears are selected based on the pressure this pump is actually delivering. So the pump pressure is actually uh, depends on the uh, torque converter speed and the torque converter speed actually depends on the engine speed. So when the engine speed increases, the torque converter speed increases, uh, which, of us, uh, which ended up speed in the pressure in the system because the torque converter is directly connected to the uh, pump itself. So this pump pressure then supplied into these valves over here, right? These valves over here. So these valve, these valves actually are spring-loaded control valves, right? Spring-loaded control valve. So spring-loaded control valve means something like similar to your uh, pen, that uh, push button pens. So it actually has a spring on one side and you have a button sort of arrangement in the other side. So, so in order to actually, uh, in order for this, uh, these valves has to be open or closed to actually change the gears. So once the pressure, once the pressure activating on these valves, if it is over the load, uh, load actually acting on it, the other directions from the spring, if it is over then that only the springs will be actually open and pro, uh, change the gears. And uh, finally, we have then the then it's actually changed the gear ratios. Finally, we have something called a uh, governor. So governor actually in charge of to check whether everything is working well. If the uh, system's speed is too much, then governor will understand the output shaft speed is measured by the governor. Then the governor is actually understood if the governor understood the output shaft speed is too much at that case it will cut down the pressure from the system so that's why the governor is there so i know this is too complicated to understand from this particular image so i i have another simplified one which is this one right so this is the working of a complete automatic transmission right complete automatic transmission so okay so engine right when engine is actually working on it rotates the torque converter as i told you earlier i will sum up everything again so torque converter then connected to a pump right pump is actually pressurizing the uh, generate the pressure necessary so this pump then sent the hydraulic pressure to uh, all around the uh, all around the sorry all around the what's okay yeah so this pump then sends the pressure all around the gearbox housing itself so part of that pump is actually provided to the hydraulic power uh, hydraulic control valves One Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yes, so engine actually rotate the torque converter, right? So then torque converter in turn rotate the pump itself, right? So the pump increased the pressure inside the or the liquid uh, hydraulic fluid inside the gearbox itself. That hydraulic fluid pressure is provided in two ways. One is the gear trains and to the hydraulic control valves. So these hydraulic control valves take input from the pump as well as the governor 
then the output is the actuators similar to what we discussed in your uh, electronic fuel injection system so these uh, hydraulic control valves actually actuate the gear controllers right so in order to change these gear range there are uh, hydraulically operated actuators so these hydraulically operated actuators are controlled by these hydraulic control valves right so then by uh, based on the pump input and the governor uh, governor control valves the actuators will be changed if that can change the gear which ratio the way gear box is in and the output actually uh, delivers from this gear box so that's the basic outline right that's the basic outline now um, hopefully you all got that we'll go to each one of these components next okay so we'll start with the torque converter the torque converter is actually a uh, basically it's actually a uh, something called a fluid coupling right fluid coupling so uh, fluid coupling means something like this so wait Okay, so we have one fan, right? There's another fan. Right, one of these fans are connected to AC power supply. Right, so when this fan is actually rotating, it's actually generating wind. Right, this is going to generate wind. So th the second fan, this is number one fan, this is number two fan. Number two fan is not connected anywhere. Right. So when this number one fan is actually working, number two, when number two fan is actually, or uh, number one fan is working, as a result of that, number two fan started to also rotate, right? So higher the RPM of this number one fan, uh, little by little, the speed of the number two fan will also increase. Right, so the same thing. So number one and number two fan. Same thing actually happens in the. Sorry. In the uh, gearbox, uh, in the transmission itself, itself as well. So similar to the input fan and the second fan that rotating in the gearbox itself it's actually have something called a um, impeller impeller and a turbine right so the impeller when the impeller is rotating right when the impeller is directly connected to the engine right so when impeller is actually rotating it's actually it's, so engine is rotating the impeller is rotate by itself so impeller actually sends the hydraulic fluid hydraulic fluid towards the turb right then it's channeled through the turbine veins turbine veins and return turn it 980 degrees and send it backwards into the uh, into the impeller itself again 
so this is what actually happening in the uh, in the torque converter itself but if you can properly i'm not exactly sure whether you get my point but since now engine is actually rotating and the same fluid uh, run is coming back towards it so engine is trying to actually push so the impeller impeller means engine engine is actually trying to push fluid this way right engine is trying to push it that way but the once it travel through the turbine which in turn rotate the gearbox right that gearbox is now connected to the uh, turbine sorry turbine itself so once it's turned it's turn the direction once it travel through the turbine the direction of the flow fluid uh, hydraulic fluid flow will now turn so it's against the fluid flow right against the fluid flow so what it end up doing is once it reach over here it's actually going to slow down the, the impeller itself this is now trying to slow down the impeller's speed itself so to fix that right so to fix that there's another part included in here right there's another part included in the middle of this which is known as the stator right so stator is a with the, something with a one way clutch that only rotate in a one direction allow it to rotate in a one direction and cancel out these forces right which cancel out uh, there's nothing of colors of yeah cancel out these forces and uh allow this fluid the, the returning fluid back into the impeller without much of a trouble right without much of a trouble so it will not in the, so that actually take out the energy that returning energy and uh send that fluid back into the impeller itself so as a result of that it can again turn that fluid without loss of energy back towards the turbine right now turbine again it goes through the turbine through the stator comes back into the impeller again comes out from the impeller with the pressure increase and goes through right so this is the process actually happening inside of the uh, whole uh, yeah whole uh, torque converter but what you have to understand is the turbine is connected to the gears right turbine is actually connected to the gears and the impeller is connected to the uh, engine itself but the whole housing around this the complete housing that goes around this which i will draw using what color the whole housing is something like that so the complete housing of this right the complete housing of this actually directly connected to the engine itself and the impeller is a part of the housing right or the cover of the torque converter right in the middle of that torque converter uh, we actually have this uh, impeller and the turbine itself okay give me one second right okay so
so uh, yes we'll come back to the uh, class again so now you can see the torque converter here so torque converter contains as i told you earlier housing so this whole one is the housing and the impeller right impeller is the housing itself so impeller is behind this section over here right and we have the stator in the middle of turbine and the impeller itself so this is this whole com assembly is a completely is completely a uh, sealed component right sealed component component so the fluid right fluid which leaves the which actually leaves the impeller right goes to the turbine and turn sorry its traveling direction is something like this then its turn in direction and comes back to here right now once it comes back here since this is actually rotated by the engine itself and the direction is different right the direction is different so the stator uh, change the direction back again or reduce the velocity and uh, leave there and make it actually uh, make it efficient so there will not be any loss of uh, pressure inside the system that's why the impeller is here but one more thing even though I, when i was explaining previously i draw it using a, a, the uh, for the uh, ease of explanation i draw it that direction that way previously but in real case once the whole component is assembled the transmission sorry engine actually connected to the over here right impeller is in near near the uh, transmission side but the shaft right the gearbox input shaft actually goes through this hole over here and over here and up to this section over here that means up to the turbine right so these are these components are freewheeling right these components are actually allowed to freewheel up to one direction right it's only uh, rotated up to one direction so that's the simplest explanation i can actually give for the torque converter but uh, torque converter is a very important uh, component right very important component so just to be more clear about this torque converter and how it works and all I actually added another few uh, videos. I added a few videos rather than you discuss or talk about this thing. Uh, it's actually easy for you guys as well as for me to uh, let you guys watch some uh, animations, right? Some animations. So I attach over here. So hopefully you, uh, you can go ahead and see them. Uh, no, no hurry because you have in semester exams this week. So uh, after finishing your mid semester exams, you can actually go ahead and watch them. So uh, let us discuss a little bit about this, right? A little bit about this. So here uh, it's actually showing you a cutway, right? Showing you a cutway. Now uh, let me try to um, let me try to actually show this component. So this is your turbine. Right, and this is your output shaft. Sorry, input shaft with the gearbox. So, then, then uh, let me use another color to show you the housing. So wait, token at a cover or house. So this is the token at a housing section. Right? So this is only the half of the token at a, and it's a complete cut. Right? So the fluid flow, if you look at from this direction, fluid flow is actually something like this uh, to be honest today not enough colors in here so uh, 
fluid flows from impeller to the uh, turbine then from turbine it's uh, rotates the turbine and return back to the stator then stator directs the uh, corrects its direction and return it back towards the back towards the impeller so this complete action is going again and again and again right so uh, hopefully you guys actually understood this uh, if, <laughs> if you are not um, it's quite complicated to explain this whole situation but at least you need to understand this fluid coupling since uh, there are no uh, hard or mechanical connection between these two right there are no mechanical connection between these two as you saw uh, it's completely hydraulic pressure right hydraulic pressure so the because of that right because of that this uh, automatically this actually works as a clutch itself right it automatically works as a clutch itself right so if there's too much force or too much load in the in uh, vehicle if the engine could not actually rotate the wheels in such case from here it's actually work uh, it actually uh, sorry it actually um uh sleeps it actually sleeps and works as a uh normal clutch itself in addition to that in addition to that there are few other benefits of this right few other benefits of this so as you can see over here right as you can see over here the torque multiplication right torque multiplication so the torque multiplication from a uh, uh, automatic gearbox is very important, right? So very important. Since there are, since there is a fluid coupling, the input uh, difference between the speeds, right? Speeds inside the torque converter, inside the torque converter, right? That automatically produces a ratio torque value. Right, torque value. So it's actually act as a gear itself, uh, creating a increase of torque. So at lowest RPM, right, lowest RPM, since the turbine is rotating at lower RPM than the impeller RPM, it's actually producing more torque, right? So that torque value uh, for a typical vehicle is around, uh, uh, typically around 2.2 one uh, but when it's actually operating speeds once it's fully engaged right fully engaged this actually reduces to up to around one to one right one to one so this effect because of this effect we call these components as torque convert so there's another benefit of this so since this can actually give like a torque benefit to the engine itself it can actually eliminate the number of gears as well. So since it's actually giving automatic torque and uh, torque value increase, that also helps to reduce the number of gears. That's one of the main reasons for automatic gearboxes to have one gear less than the manual counterpart of the same engine gearbox or transport, you know, so the same weight, right? Then, then we need to talk about this coupling point, right? until this coupling point comes up right until the uh, this coupling point uh, until this coupling point the engine rpm and the uh, the torque converter output or the gear input shaft ratios are different right once it come up to this coupling point only the engine rpm and the gearbox transmission input uh, shaft rpm is going to be the same so that was one of the main reasons previously or the previous generation in the early days these automatic transmissions were not that much preferred by the uh, drivers because it takes some time for engine to rev the gear transmission up to a gear changing speed so this was a difficult task right this was a difficult task so there were some uh, uh, main changes were made in order to actually uh, fix these issues so there were a few other things actually i have explained this over here and the efficiency pass this torque converter is 
not that efficient so around the coupling it's actually have around 70 75 sort of uh, efficiency in the system so during that whole uh, system it's actually using sort of some uh, some energy comparing to a normal clutch based system which actually have a higher efficiency unless it's slipping so uh, the clutch system actually uh, performed very well previously but nowadays with the new uh, system or the new design uh, techniques and the development in the computer more uh, generate uh, computer modeling most of these uh, uh, issues were actually offset so i'm not actually going to go through more and more details into this because it's getting very complicated over this it's getting very very complicated okay so uh, before we go ahead uh, i'll just give you one one simple explanation so the torque converter part is this is like the simplest way can i can actually explain this is more very complicated than this this is comes under like fluid uh, assist, uh, fluid mechanics fluid dynamic sort of uh, area that uh, uses to transmit the power right so torque converter is not only used in the gearboxes there are other vehicles use these particular applications particular unit for different applications okay uh, so next part we need to discuss is the gear train so the gear trains or uh, the epicycle gear trains or planetary gears right uh, just give me one second before we start this next section
Okay. Now, yeah. So if we come back here, so we discuss about the torque converter now, right? I'm not actually going to go through about the pump. I will just go with the gear trains, actuators, and the hydraulic pump, hydraulic valves. So pump is a usual sort of a pump similar to this uh, <clears throat> engine oil pump, sort of something like that. So the epicyclic gear train or the planetary gear train. So this particular type of gear train has a big advantage over the, uh, the other types of gear train. So this is the same type of gears actually, or the same gear train is actually using these hybrid vehicles, especially these are Tota call something as a um, synergy drive. So the synergy drive system actually utilizes the same gear train. The advantage of this system is uh, instead of changing the gear wheels, right, instead of changing the gear wheel, this particular app system can obtain different gear ratios, right? Different gear ratios. So the uh, let me start it like this. The, the reason for call this as the planetary gear system is uh, the way how it actually uh, named and how it's actually like arranged. So the gear in the center, right? Gear in the center, uh, we call it as the sun wheel, right? This is the sun gear, right? The center gear is the sun gear, right? This one over here is the sun gear, right? Then uh, we have three gear wheels on these three sections. So these are actually known as the planetary gears. So planetary gears actually go around the ring gear, sorry, uh, goes around the uh, sun gear, right? Goes around the sun gear. Then we actually have another gear goes around the planetary gears. We call it as the ring gear. But in the ring gear, the gears are inside, right? Gears are invert. So the tooths are actually inside of the wheel there. All the other wheel gears actually have the tooth outside of the wheel, but in the this gear, the gears the, the are outside, right? So uh, in order to achieve different gear ratios of this, right? Just without doing anything, assume that we put input from this uh, sun gear, right? So if we give an input to this sun gear, Right, so sun gear is over here, so we rotating. So when that's actually rotating, as a result of that, it turns the planetary gears. Right, it turns the planetary gears. Then, uh, when the planetary gears are turning, it in turns it actually turn, it, uh, rotate the ring gear. Right, we can actually rotate the ring gear, but right, but uh, so that will give one output, right? That will give one output. There's another way we can give an, get an output. So the input is again from the uh, sun gear itself, but we do not allow the ring gear to actually rotate. We keep it, we lock it, right? We keep it locked. So it's not rotating, now it's we keep it stopped, right? Then when we apply that, Right. When we apply that, the these three ring gears, sorry, these three uh, planter gears now are supposed to rotate, but uh, since they can't rotate freely, what actually happens is uh, all three ring uh, planter ring rotor gears started going around the ring gear, Go, goes around the uh, goes around this sun gear in this track between the ring gear and the sun gear. So which in turn, turn this red part, which is called as the planet carrier, right? That's two gear ratios, right? So we have two gear ratios with this. We can even get more gear ratios if we stopped. Uh, then if we, uh, if we stop, uh, ring gear as well as the planet carrier itself, right? If we not allow the planet carrier to rotate freely, the same input that put into the uh, ring gear, so, uh, sorry, sun gear, will be the output from the this planet carrier as well. So it actually provide you three gear ratios. Three gear ratios can be actually achieved by this. 
so this particular set of gears are not that uh, oh it actually needs very small amount of space to fix and change the gears since gears are not changed to be not to be changed with the uh, mechanism that means change moving the whole system or the gear wheels or any mechanism uh, the gear changing system is very simple right very simple as shown in the image over here right this one over here right so if you look at there you can see the ring gear is there be around the sing ring gear we have something like a another ring so this called this part is actually called as the brake band right this part part is called as the brake band so this is the actuator that i posted so similar actuators are used for each components for example the planet carrier can be stopped using clutch plates right if the clutch plate are completely uh, locked the planet carrier could not rotate by itself it has to rotate with this shaft right so that sort of arrangements can be arranged so these are the actually uh, these are the actuators right these are the actuators so what actually happens in this ring gear situation a uh, hydraulic pressure is applied from one direction right one direction which actually locks up this particular um, brake band which not allow or which actually stop the moving of the ring gear which allows a one gear ratio similar is the similar the things can be actually obtained in order to keep these parts locked completely locked so that's how the uh, actuator section works so i guess you got the basic idea how the planter gear system works so uh, yes now we comes back to the uh, driving and holding part so we call it as the uh, yeah so next part is the brake band so actuators so these actuators as i told you earlier so the oil pressure comes from this direction which applied on this piston over here so this piston is actually supported by a spring so when this pressure is higher than this spring's pressure the spring load this this whole brake band will be actually moved right brake band will be moved completely locking the gears right similar application similar system is used for the uh, planet carrier itself so planet carriers uh, what, what what it does uh, what it actually has is a clutch pack we call it as a clutch pack which is uh, come back so there will be some sort of like clutch and pressure arrangements right once these uh, these are actually grooved into here so when this is completely applied the uh, this planet carrier is not allowed to rotate i'm, I'm not exactly sure that you get this point or not but i will highly suggest you to go through these videos right so go through these videos you will be able to get an uh, more understanding so i actually had uh, attached a video a set of videos from a, a person i know and uh, uh, which uh, i'll i'll explain the whole story once i come to that location but uh, over there you will be able to actually see each and every components very well explained and operation of them so clutch pack and uh, now if we come back here brake bands and the clutch pack are the components that actually changes the gears so next we have the hydraulic the hydraulic actuators so hydraulic actuation is or the controlling part is actually done by again uh, from a set of valves so if we come back right if we come back to the beginning the pump right the pump actually uh, controls the pressure that pressure line is delivered into these actuators right these actuators so so what happen is these actuators 
are loaded you can see there's like a spring load right there's like a spring loads right? these are spring loaded so once they got enough pressure to overtake one valve right these channels actually send fluid through different directions so these have small valves so these are the small valves inside of it's actually having small valves so these valves actually control which gear to be changed so for example assume that engine is at 3000 rpm right now the engine is uh, in second gear in order to change the change it up to the uh, third gear once engine go over the 3200 3, 3, rpms now engine uh, the pressure of the system increase because the pump speed increase so as a result of that this pressure increase so now the first valve is open so or the second once the second uh, gear valve is now open now the actuator is activated in addition to that a channel is open so that open channel sends the fluid up to the third gear as well right third actuator as well so now the third actuator is uh, gaining the pressure once it goes 3200 rpm again now the third valve will also open again actuating another um, another um, what you call another actuator which change the gear i i i guess i'm really that's the uh i don't know whether you get it or not it's complicated to explain though right so uh yes so the full operations once we get the full operation the d and the second first and third right uh, it's actually mentioned here yeah, i'm not actually planning to go through one by one it's too complicated uh you guys can first read on this right first read on this in the next class after you uh, read this i will come back and i will explain again so you'll be able to understand bit a uh, little bit better okay so this is the complete assemble right this is a complete assembly of a transmission so go ahead so i have already uploaded these to the Moodle. so please go ahead and watch them um, uh, see them and uh, watch the videos you will be able to get more detail onto this i just wanted to give you the basic idea how this actually works so the torque converter is working as a fluid coupling then you have the pump pump actually pressurize the whole system then the, based on the pump pressure uh, the uh, the valves valve body or the control body of the system actually operate set of valves changing gear by one gear after the other automatically right so everything is finally uh, comes up to this hydraulic pressure that's all i actually needed to un let you know and the gears are not actually changing like uh, sliding gear so having a single mesh unit or something instead of having uh, such a um, difficult system it's actually having a simple mechanism to actually change the gears using a epicyclic gear train right that's the main part i was actually uh, concerned about so diagnostic wise uh, the talk uh, these uh, gearboxes can be diagnostic but uh, it's need a special equipment like this particular one right these are quite expensive and uh, need to have the correct data calibration data and everything uh, which related to that particular engine itself so the next one is there's another test that we can actually uh, uh, do it in our home but uh, this test should not be done again and again this could end up uh, damaging the whole gearbox uh, the one more thing uh, about these automatic gearboxes they are very delicate so you have to be very uh, concerned when using it there so very simple uh, application you just uh, uh, put it into the Uh, low position and fully depress the 
throttle right fully to press the throttle and uh, see where the uh, where the vehicle is actually start to move right uh, move so that's that's how it's actually find out if the system is working or not this part i actually just put to for you guys to see it's not uh, in your curriculum so it's but uh, more knowledge is not going to damage yourself anyway anyways so the next part is actually flywheel where the transmission uh, actually being connected to the engine itself right i know the uh, transmission or the automatic gearbox system part is quite complicated uh, i'll i'll revisit that section for you guys to understand it better so when it comes to the flywheel right flywheel is a very important component in the engine itself the even though most people think the main purpose of the flywheel is to like transfer the power up to the drive clutch it's not it's not to the main purpose the main purpose of the flywheel is to actually provide the uh, energy balancing or it's actually act as a sort of like a capacitor right sort of like a capacitor if you uh, direct your attention towards the uh, graph right if you uh, take your attention towards the graph so the turning moment right or the torque valve right torque of the engine actually comes in a situation like this so assuming this is a four three cylinder engine right so one cylinder fires and another cylinder another cylinder likewise there will be four cylinders will be firing so in between right in between there are gaps right so there are gaps so that means the engine power is not smooth enough so engine is not giving enough power so um, a smooth power output so in such case right in such case the flywheel right the flywheel actually assist in this case so what it does is it actually stores energy right it stores the kinetic energy using inertia right kinetic energy of the engine the excess kinetic energy will be stored in the flywheel as inertia so when engine uh, slows down right during these dips right these dips since the flywheel has inertia energy it actually keep a smooth power output like this right it's actually fill these gaps it's actually fill these gaps so once that's actually completely filled it's very easy to drive so without the clutch right without the clutch in higher rpms this you can't actually feel this especially in low rpms especially in this low rpms it's very difficult to drive without a flywheel because the distance or the gap between these uh, uh, peaks gaps between these peaks are higher right uh, gaps between these peaks are higher so uh, that's why the flywheel is a heavy metal component but uh, additionally it provide two more out uh, uh, two more things one is the power output to the uh, uh, transmission and the second one is actually it's help to start the engine because the ring gear is so uh, the trans uh, start motor ring gear is actually uh, attached to the flywheel itself that allow the ring uh, motor to have a low uh, power rp rpm and have a good high gear ratio so uh, without much of a energy requirement engine can actually uh, rotate right then uh, yes next uh, if we move to the uh, next one uh, so the flywheel is mainly used for auto um, uh, manual transmissions the heavy one but uh, automatic wheels do not actually need to use a flywheel because they use something called a flex plate the reason for only using a flex plate is this um, automatic transmissions have one advantage since they have a torque converter which filled with fluid which is in turn is very heavy it does not need a heavy flywheel the flex plate once it combined with the torque converter itself it actually act as an uh in turns here uh, once it uh, uh, combined it actually act as a um flywheel itself 
right? So that's why automatic transmissions actually use this flywheel uh, uh, system. So removing the transmission of a vehicle is a somewhat difficult task. For an automatic vehicle, it's not a big, uh, sorry, or for a manual transmission vehicle, it's not a big deal because uh, once if you uh, just bolted, the, uh, disconnected the, um, disconnected the housing, the transmission housing or the bell housing part which is connected to the engine uh, completely removed the transmission should be coming out right but in the automatic gearbox it's not the case since the uh, output shaft actually goes all the way through the up to the flex plate almost up to the flex plate right almost up to the flex plate it's it's actually made a uh, uh, yeah, it's actually need something called um, uh, so uh, uh, it could not be directly taken out without the uh, token nut itself. So first you have to actually remove the bolts from the flex plate that holding the uh, token nut into the flex plate. Then uh, only you can actually take the bolts that are holding the transmission housing or the bell housing into the engine itself until you do that it's not possible to take the uh, automatic transmissions out so that's why i actually added removing the transmission part you guys can go ahead and uh, take a look at that it will take few minutes so next part i would like to actually discuss about the transaxle gearbox or transaxle so transaxle is a, a combination of the transmission as well as the axles right so that means the final drive and everything is combined into this so there are two applications that's being used the one is the front engine front wheel drive application where the gearbox and the transmission are comes together because it's the right thing to do um in the other application is rear engine rear wheel drive one and there's a one more application which i will explain a bit later so in one advantage of this is uh, the weight of the components the, the number of components has to be used is less so weight will be actually reduced the cost will be lower and the compartment the space inside the uh, vehicle will be actually higher right uh, one disadvantage of this is now since most of the components are uh, cramped into one place, the weight of that area, or in this case, the front of the vehicle is higher, right? Front of the vehicle is higher, so the low grip on the rear wheel. So having more grip on the front wheels is good in some cases, but since this is a front wheel drive vehicle, it's to, it's actually going to end up having something called a torque steer and understeer, which we will discuss in the steering part. So because of that, Right, because of that issues, uh, this is not the best uh, case. It's not understood as the best way, but uh, for normal day-to-day uh, -day vehicle, it's not a big video since it's not high performance applications. Uh, the other application is, so the whole uh, once completely com configured system is like this. So the uh, output shaft there's no out uh, there is no proper shaft or anything like that. So directly the transmission output is uh, goes into the differential ring gear itself right so uh, one disadvantage one main disadvantage of this system is as you can see over here right one shaft and the second shaft right these two shafts actually have two different lengths that's a big disadvantage in a front wheel drive application the reason being is for a shaft like this it's actually end up going have a torsional rigidity so when the length is actually increasing the torsional rigidity actually reduces so that force for these components to have two different uh, two different characteristic while drive and uh, end up having something called a torque steer, right? Something called a torque steer. Uh, in addition to that, since the gearbox is directly, uh, the differential is directly inside the gearbox itself, there are no ways to use any suspension component, suspension or axle cannot be fully float type of uh, axle. 
it has to have the independent suspension there are no other option for this because uh, if do need to use any other options the whole engine gearbox assembly will be actually moving up and down so which is not the best solution in this case right uh, yeah next one uh, the one i did not actually uh, included previously is the uh, front engine rear wheel drive vehicles also use the similar application where you actually have the uh, engine on the front but the gearbox on the back of the vehicle so this is mainly done to actually save the space right save the space and to have this balance so this particular image is actually from this car which is the um uh, mercedes benz amg sls amg or yeah sls amg yes amg sls or sls amg or something right i'm not exactly sure anyway it's a mercedes benz amg sls right so this particular car and there's a lot of uh, front engine rear wheel drive race uh, sports uh, vehicles grand coupes such as this actually use this application so in this case the engine is on the front gearbox in the back and the differential and everything is on the back right uh, the propeller shaft actually goes through a uh, goes through a uh, supported tube in this case right supported tube in this case not just a uh, propeller shaft along it's actually has a tube itself which is known as the torque tube right torque tube this actually provide the rigidity for this whole uh, gearbox and uh, engine itself since the engine and transmission are in, in low, uh, different areas of the vehicle it's actually need this rigidity in order to uh, drive it well uh, one and uh, the main advantage of this system is so since engine is having more weight on the back it's actually weight, weight wise it's very well balanced so like 50 50 balance and in addition to that in addition to that this actually provide the vehicles to have a good traction of the ground so that means good traction traction means vehicle can go fast right so for these applications uh, for these advantages some vehicles so manufacturers do prefer to have this system right so a uh, complete system the complete uh, front wheel uh, the front the most popular version is actually the of this uh, particular uh, transaxle is the front wheel rear wheel drive vehicle so sorry front engine front wheel drive vehicle so the whole assembly is actually shown here so advantages and disadvantages also being discussed yeah so oh it's 12 24 yeah, so um, I will be stopping from here. I don't. I hope you guys got some idea how the automatic transmission works. At least if you got this part, at least if you got the idea up to this section, the torque converter, pump, hydraulic valves, controls the actuators, which turns the change the gears, and the gear train is not the normal gear train. It uses a different type of a gear train called as a epicyclic gears. And uh, up, if at least you got up. Uh, idea about that part that's more than enough for me uh, because this is a very complicated part to actually explain even with an engine so with the gearbox with parts and everything uh, so i can imagine how it's difficult for you guys to understand even without any of these components uh, in my hand so yeah uh we go back yes so additional reading wise uh, for this particular video uh, lectures especially i added a lot of things why uh, especially i uh, would like to in ask you to go ahead and watch these things uh, get more details unless you have more and if you do not actually search for these things you will not be able to understand it in, later on okay so yeah um, so today while uh, once we have completed up to flywheel right up to flywheel so my plan is to somehow finish the this whole section by next class which probably will be on thursday which we uh, we can discuss that uh, that we can even change in case it's necessary so yeah uh, that's it for the class we'll be meeting on the next class